class. This reaction right here was introduced to you in Organic Chemistry 1. To recall when you take an alkene and treat it with an acid like hydrochloric acid, hydroiodic acid, or hydrobromic acid, you generate this halogen, halogenated alkane. And shown here is the mechanism in which the electron rich pi electrons in the double bond abstract the proton, generating a carbocation, <coughs> and then the electron rich uh, chloride will then attack the carbocation to form our product. Now the reason why I'm bringing this to your attention to spark your memory is because we're going to do a similar reaction but this time with dienes. And so it's really good to refresh ourselves with Orgo 1 reaction here because we're going to apply similar principles to when we treat the diene with HCl. All right. So let's continue on with our review <clears throat> of just a normal alkane. alkene. Okay. So let's say we have a alkene that's unsymmetrical. Okay. We've learned that when you treat it with hydrochloric acid, you are going to get two, pro two products. You're going to have a minor product and a major product. So when we have that, we what's going on is we have read geochemistry. We can see that the chlorine atom on one chloropropane is now the chlorine is on a different carbon. <coughs> so this reaction is read geoselective because the majority of the products is this one. So why does the chlorine prefer to go to carbon 2? And the answer to that is the Markovnikov rule helps us to understand that and understanding what, how carbocations are formed. So if we take our molecule of interest, treat it with hydrochloric acid, we can generate two possible carbocations. We can generate a, a primary carbocation, and the primary carbocation is if the hydrogen is attached to that carbon versus a carbocation shown in blue in which the hydrogen attached to a different carbon. Now, when the hydrogen attaches to that carbon, we generate a secondary carbocation, which is more stable than a primary carbocation. And because the secondary carbocation is lower in energy, it's going to promote the this product right there. Because it has a smaller hill to climb to go through this reaction. It's easier, lower in energy. Our Konikoff rule simply states when you look at a alkene, you find the two carbons and then find the carbons that has the most hydrogens. And when you treat that with hydrochloric acid, where is this hydrogen going to go? Markonikoff rule says that hydrogen is going to go to the carbon that already has the most hydrogens. So we can see that these two hydrogens right here are already there. And then this one came from the acid. And the reason why Markonikoff rule works comes back to the stability of the cation. Now what, now let's look at butadiene, okay? So in particular, 1,3-butadiene, which is going to look like this. 
Let's take a look at how that molecule is going to react with hydrochloric acid. So this reaction can be done with HBr and HI. Okay. Those types of acids will work. Now when we take the butadiene and treat it with our acids here, you can see that we are going to get two different products shown right here. Right. So if we number these here, if we number the starting material, we can see based off of the numbers, we can see that in this molecule here, chlorine was added to carbon three, whereas the molecule on the far right, chlorine added to carbon one. We also notice that the double bond, that double bond is that double bond. But in the product on the far right, the double bond is now moved on us, which is quite interesting. Okay. So we have, that's the overall reaction. We're going to get two products when we do this addition reaction with a diene. So now let's delve into it a little bit more to figure out how to understand this reaction at a deeper level. Okay. So if we number our carbons again, We have two products here, and these two products can be called the 1-2 addition and the 1-4 addition. So this molecule right here is going to be called our 1-2 addition. And the molecule on the far right is going to be our 1-4 addition. Uh, how do I know when I look at a molecule, how am I going to figure out which one is a 1, 2 and which one is a 1, 4? That is a skill that we need to understand. The way we do that is we identify where the attachment has occurred. So if we look at our starting material, okay, look at our starting material. Where did the chlorine add? Right there. But where did the hydrogen add from the acid? Right. Now to understand what's happening here, let's take a let's take a step back and look at the mechanism first. Okay. Once we learn what the mechanism is, then we'll come back to figure out what this one two one four addition thing is talking about. Okay. So let's. Here's the reaction mechanism. So here's our betadiene. The first step, much like the alkene reaction, the alkene comes, abstracts the proton, and that proton was added on that terminal carbon and generated this carbocation. Now what's cool about this is that this carbocation has a resonance structure. It's resonance stabilized to this guy right here. So here we have, so this cation is called an allylic cation. And allylic cations are very stable due to the fact that there's resonance. Okay. Once that cation is formed, you have two resonance structures here. Okay. When you have this resonance structure right here, the chloride is going to come in and attack that carbon, and we get this product right here. However, 
with the same molecule, you can have a second resonance structure here, which then if the chloride comes in and attacks at that position, we get this product. And we call these a 1, 2, 1, 4 addition product based off of the relationship of where the hydrogen added and where the halogen added. So in a 1, 2 product, do you see how that the hydrogen is attached to that carbon and the chlorine is attached to that carbon? When the hydrogen that was added and the halogen is two, two adjacent carbons from one another, that's a 1, 2 addition. However, when you look at this molecule on the bottom here, when the you, you're looking at the carbon where the hydrogen was added and the carbon at which the halogen was added, do you see how that they are one, two, three, four carbons away from each other? That's what the one, four is talking about. When we come back up here to the top, we can see that these two, the two groups that are being added are attached to carbon one and carbon two. They're, they're adjacent to each other. So they're two carbons from one another, okay? So that's what the one, two is, stand, is standing for, okay? So the trick though with this is when you come back to this right here, how do I know this is the one, two? Well, I gotta pay very close attention to where the hydrogens are being added. Because I already know there's two hydrogens here. Okay. On, so on carbon four, there's two hydrogens already. But when I look at the product and I look at carbon four, what do I see? There are now three hydrogens. So we've added one. And so that's a one, two relationship. And then when you see a molecule like this, you gotta find where the hydrogen was added. We're not going to show it to you. There it is, there's the hydrogen, there's the halogen, and that is in a one, four relationship. So that's the trick and the challenge is that the hydrogens are not going to be drawn in typically. So you gotta watch out for that, okay? Let's see here. So this is the correct mechanism. And you see how the hydrogen right here went to that terminal carbon there, okay? Now I want to show you a, a mistake that you can make. And I'm gonna draw it right here, okay? So before I show you the mistake, let's do it correctly. So mechanistically, these pi electrons are going to come, grab that, and give us a allylic stabilized carbocation. So our hydrogen added there. Okay, that's the correct mechanism. Contrast that with the incorrect mechanism drawn right here. These pi electrons, let's draw it, use a different color. Um, boom. And what happens? The hydrogen being added there. So to be clear, Yes, the chloride is still there, but I'm not interested in focusing on that, okay? Do you see the difference of this hydrogen went on that carbon and then the hydrogen went to this carbon? Now, why is this bottom one bad? Okay, why is it, why does it not do this? Because what do we generate? We generate a primary carbocation. And that is very, very unstable. 
do you see if I added the if I add the hydrogen here, do you see how that this these pi electrons are not involved in resonance? But up here, you can see that there is resonance right here. And resonance is a stabilizing effect. So that this re this mechanism right here, you don't do it because you generate a very unstable carbocation. 